Welcome to another edition of Brugler's Draft Board here in the BetMGM Casino Studio. Dane, college football championship is finally here. Clemson, LSU. Let's talk about some prospects on both these teams. Let's start things off by talking about Clemson and their running back, Travis Etienne. Seems to be one of the biggest home run hitters in his class. It's a great way to put it, and an interesting wrinkle in this game is ETN is from a small town in Louisiana, and so he's a rare case of the big recruit spurning LSU, signing outside of the SEC, and now he's got a chance to face his hometown program. You could say that he's almost a better athlete than running back right now because you love his speed. You love the el elusive qualities that make him productive, especially in the open field. Uh, he's not the most graceful runner between the tackles. He needs to improve his patience, his pacing, uh, allow blockers to develop and uh, anticipate those holes. And so uh, the biggest question will be in the passing game. Now, he's a capable screen receiver. We saw that against Ohio State. He had almost 100 yards receiving, only three catches, but two of them went for touchdowns. So get him the ball in space. He can make things happen. So how does he do as a blocker? That's the big question. Uh, he's been below average over his career in pass protection, and that's something that could limit his role very early on in an NFL career. Let's talk about cornerback A.J. Terrell for the Clemson Tigers. Last year, Clemson had a cornerback in the second round. Trayvon Mullen, now an Oakland Raider. You think A.J. Terrell's in a similar state, at least for a projection standpoint? Yeah, Terrell, he's one of the better cornerback uh, prospects in the country. Uh, he's a former five-star guy. Uh, he's out of Atlanta, so his name has been on the map for a while. But he's also the guy that had to pick six of Tua early in the national title game last year. So that helped introduce him to more people. He's now a junior, draft eligible. Anytime when he lines up against Jamar Chase, who won the Blitnikoff Award, only a true sophomore. But at this time next year, we'll be talking about Chase. Uh, that's going to be a fun matchup to watch for evaluators. Really good versus really good. And with Joe Burrow, uh, you know, calling the shots there at quarterback, he is a confident thrower. He is not going to be shy testing Terrell uh, if he lines up against Chase. So that is going to be a fun matchup to watch. Let's talk about the other Tigers team, the LSU Tigers, the number one team in the country. Steamrolled Oklahoma, now will take on Clemson. Let's talk about up front for the Tigers offensive line at the anchor, Lloyd Cushenberry, your second-rated center. Just simply put, what's the book on him and what are you looking for him in the championship matchup? Cushenberry is one of the more underrated prospects in the country. I don't think he receives nearly enough love. Uh, a redshirt junior who I expect to declare, uh, he's been the key piece to LSU's offensive line this year. And this is an offensive line that has kept Joe Burrow upright. They won the Joe Moore Award as the nation's top offensive line. Uh, they've done a nice job in the ground game, giving uh, Edwards Hilaire room to make plays. Uh, he makes a lot of the line calls. He makes sure everyone's doing their job. So that's why he is in the conversation to be the first center drafted if he doesn't uh, indeed declare. Switch sides of the ball again. The LSU Tigers defense. We've talked about Edge Calavon Chase on before. But what have you seen from him so far this season? And what are you looking from him in the championship game? He's an offensive tackle nightmare because he stresses out blockers with his athleticism. And it's the threat of speed that makes him a problem. Uh, the production is good, not great this season. Six and a half sacks. Uh, you know, typically you expect more from a player with his type of ability, but the tape shows a player who routinely affects the pocket and he does it in different ways. I mean, there's no question uh, he's still learning the art of the pass rush and he needs to develop his instincts. But as an athlete uh, at that premium position, those types of guys rarely get out of the first round. Let's wrap things up for this segment, talking about the star or one of the stars from last week's game, Justin Jefferson, 14 catches, 227 yards and four touchdowns. I mean, Dane, did this guy just put himself in the first round? Well, anyone who didn't know about Jefferson before the semifinal game, they definitely do now. And I think all of those stats that you mentioned, I think all were in the first half, uh, or at least most were in the first half. I mean, just ridiculous. Uh, he's now over 100 catches on the season. He's got 18 touchdowns. And LSU uses him exclusively in the slot. And so they really take advantage of his size, his short area quickness so he can tack the middle of the field. Uh, shows off the toughness 
uh, after the catch. And he's just another example of why this year's draft class is loaded at receiver, has a, a chance to be special. If you can get a guy like Jefferson on day two, that, that just that speaks to the volume of talent at the receiver position this year. What do you think about the matchup between Trevor Lawrence and Joe Burrow? We didn't talk about either of these guys in terms of prospects, but what do you think about the matchup in the college football playoff and the championship game? And what do you think about the overall matchup in the final game in college football this season? There's a great chance we are going to be watching the next two number one picks, uh, Joe Burrow to the Cincinnati Bengals in the 2020 draft and then Trevor Lawrence as a top pick in the 2021 draft. Uh, to, you know, we'll see who that team ends up being. Uh, two really talented quarterbacks. Uh, Joe Burrow's the more polished guy, more seasoned. I mean, he's a couple years older, that's expected. Uh, Trevor Lawrence is the young gun, and we saw what he could do with his legs. And so how will LSU game plan uh, to stop him on the ground? Is that going to open up things for ETN on the outside? That, that'll that be an interesting part uh, of this matchup. It's going to be really fun to watch these two teams go at it. Uh, but I, it's hard to see Joe Burrow and with everything that he's done this year uh, lose uh, in this game. Clemson's defense isn't what it was a year ago. I, I have Joe Burrow coming out on top and you know winning the Heisman, winning the national title, being the number one overall pick. I, I think it's all achievable for him, and I think there's a good chance it happens. The trifecta for Joe Burrow, according to Dane Brugler. That was another edition of Brugler's Draft Board here in the BetMGM Casino Studio. Dane, thanks a lot, and we'll see you next week. All right, thanks, Ethan. 